McWater, McWorther, McWaters. Oh, it's been all of that. I know who I am. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. First, giving honor to God who's ahead of my life. In the absence of our pastor and co-pastor this morning to all the ministers in their prospective places, saints and friends, my husband and children that are here, um, those that are viewing by live stream, we bring greetings from Rightly Dividing the Word Church where Jesus Christ is Lord. And we're going to give a special shout out to our apostle and co-pastor. They are on a special assignment this morning. Amen. And we thank you, Lord God, for your perfect will being done concerning them today. And uh, we're going to get right into the word. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank God for the service thus far. Amen. And this was a word that I gave recently, but God saw fit that it should be ministered again. So we're going to obey the spirit of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We here at Rightly have had the honor in recent weeks of seeing several of our young people achieve great milestones in their young lives. Amen. They've been graduating from high school and even college. And I want to say that from my heart, as, as well as every person here, we are so very proud of you. Whether you, you know, whether it was high school, whether it was college, you know, whatever you have done in this season, we are very proud of you and we cheer you on. Amen. Especially with all that they've had to endure in the last few years. If they if you graduated this year and came through the panoramic pandemic, all of that, you know, they went through a lot of changes that, you know, some people weren't able to rebound from. So we're, you know, duly proud of y'all for being able to stand through all of that. Amen. Each one of you experienced something called a commencement. And a commencement is a ceremony that's held to honor students who either just have or will soon graduate. Amen. But the word itself, commencement, is a noun that means a beginning or a start. Amen. It means a beginning or a start. And you're beginning and starting a new phase or the next phase of your lives. And it's a phase that's filled with choices. Amen. There are big choices like what school am I going to attend? Will I start school in the summer? And for some, will I even go off to college at all? Because we have to understand that that's not the move for everybody. Amen. There are some that God has a different path to success for them, and that's totally okay. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And then there's a lot of small choices, like just what do I want to do with my time today? Because as long as you're in school, you got a schedule. You got somewhere to be Monday through Friday. You got somewhere to be for eight hours of the day, and that time is already set. You don't have nothing to say about that, but just be on time. Amen? So now... Some of you are in a position where you have the option of choosing what you need to do with your time that day. Amen. But I submit to you, our young people, and even to all of us adults that are here as well, whatever part of life you're in, that life is choice driven. Amen. And that's the subject of my message today, that a choice driven life. Amen. We're going to talk about a choice driven life. Hallelujah. Let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. Amen. Hallelujah. And when you get there, say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Are we there? Mm -hmm. 30 and 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against, record this day against you that I have set before you life and death blessings and cursing therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live amen may god add a blessing to the hearers readers and doers of his word a choice driven life what i'm saying is that at the end of the day and at most any point in your life what you have what you've accomplished or the state of your existence will not be attributed to anyone else, but it's going to rest solely in the hands of the choices that you have made for your life. Amen. 
It'll have everything to do with the choices that you have made. Amen. Amen. Turn to Galatians 6 and 7. get there say amen Galatians 6 and 7 says be not deceived God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth or chooses that shall he also reap amen Proverbs 1 and 31 says therefore they shall eat the fruit of their own way and in those both those cases it didn't necessarily sound like a positive thing. Amen. But let's turn to Psalms 128 and 2. Are we there? It says, for thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. That's what we want. Amen. Isn't that what we all want, for things to be well with us and well with our lives? Amen. You will eat the fruit of your hands or the fruit of your choices, and you will be happy, and it shall be well with thee. This well means pleasing and good, and that's what we want. We want to make choices that are going to lead us to a pleasing life, a good life, a peaceful life. Amen. But this well with you life that we desire to have in verse two is tied to verse one. And verse one says, blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord that walketh in his way. Now, when we read Proverbs one and thirty one, it talked about them, the fruit of their own way. But if we want that good and pleasing and well life, we got to walk in the ways of the Lord. Amen. The instructions are already here. There's no way around it. To get to the good and pleasing life that you desire, a life that pleases God, you're going to need to walk in the ways of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah. And I said before that at most every point in life, it will be the result of our choices. Amen. The state of our life is the result of our choices. And the reason why I said that, at most every point and not all points in life is because the fact is as a child you don't have any control over the choices that are made concerning your life especially a young child they have no say over the choices that have been made for them amen you're subject to the choices of others they told you what to eat what to wear where you could go what to play, where to play, who you could play with. Hopefully told you get up because we're going to church. It's time to get ready. Hopefully they did those types of things. And those are all good choices to be made for you. But there are people, even some of us here today, for whom choices were made that were not the will of God for our lives. Amen. And that's just a fact. Everybody did not come up in a house where wise choices were being made concerning them. Amen. And it's important for you to know today that you don't have to be bound by the bad decisions of others in your life. Amen. You don't have to be bound by things that were done concerning you that were not the will of God. Amen. You have the power today to choose the direction of your life from this point on. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. Turn to Psalms 27 and 10. Hallelujah, Lord God. Is everybody there? Psalms 27 and 10 says, When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Forsake means to abandon, to renounce, or to give up. So what David is saying is that even if my father and my mother didn't do right by me, God will be there. And sometimes it's not so much a level of abandonment or mistreatment that took place. Sometimes it's just that your parents, as Elder alluded to, sometimes they just could not teach you what they did not know. 
You know, and sometimes that makes you feel like you're at a disadvantage because you don't feel like you got everything that you were supposed to get coming up. Not that they didn't do their best, but they just didn't have that to give you at the time. And you didn't feel equipped, amen, by what you should have had. Even then, you still have a God that if you tie into him, he knows how to go back and plug in all those missing pieces. He knows how to bring people into your life as a young adult and even as an adult to plug in things that were not available to you coming up as a child. But you have to be open to receive that. I learned a long time ago, just because you learn to live without something don't mean you didn't need it. Just because you learn to survive without something doesn't mean that it doesn't still need to be placed in your life. Amen. And God will do that for you. And your life can still be what God created it to be. Amen. You don't need to wait for a ceremony to start over brand new. You choose to start over whenever you choose to start over. When I'm on ministering on Facebook, a lot of times I'll say it's a new day. And I say that because to me, whatever day you come into the knowledge of the truth, that's a new start for me. Whenever something gets added that I, that was missing, that's an opportunity to start from that point on operating in the newness of life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And you don't need permission from your past to take a new path. I don't care if you messed up yesterday. You don't have to check with yesterday to make a better choice today. Amen. You have a choice in the matter. Turn to Psalms 118 and 24. Hallelujah, Lord God. We're talking about a choice-driven life. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. Psalms 118 and 24 says, This is the day which the Lord hath made. And we will or we choose to, we decide to rejoice and be glad in this day. I can't do nothing about the other days. I can't do nothing about the days in my past. But this day, I can choose to rejoice and be glad in the hope of what God has for me today. Amen. Philippians 3 and 13, Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind me. I choose to press forward. I choose to move on. Amen. We're talking about a choice driven life. A choice is defined as an act of selecting or making a decision when faced with two or more possibilities. And even though the world tends to imply that, you know, you just never know. You just don't, you don't know how it it could go good. It could go bad. You just go out there and hope for the best. That's what's implied in the world. But the definition says to decide when faced with two or more possibilities. A possibility can be known. A possibility is not abstract. If it's a possibility, it's something that can be known. Amen. Turn back to Deuteronomy 30 and 19. We're not out here just trying to wing it and figure out what to do. Hallelujah, Lord God. Back to 30 and 19 again, it says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life, that's a possibility, and death, that's a possibility. Blessings, that's a possibility. And cursing, that's also a possibility. Then he gives you instructions, therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So you're not at a, lo- at a loss when it comes to making decisions about your life. The choice can be made clear. So how do you know you're choosing life? Amen. You know you're choosing life when you are choosing to be led by the spirit and the word of God. Turn to John 16 and 13. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. And I've said before, this is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, 
And then let's read the last part together. Begin. And he will show you things to come. So that eliminates all the unknown possibilities. If you're being led by the Holy Spirit, he will show you things to come. So you don't have to be out here just guessing. Just ask him. A lot of times we don't ask because we don't want him to tell us no. Or we don't want him to redirect where we've decided to go. But we don't have to be out here just blindly, you know, surfing through life and hoping it turns out well when we have the Holy Spirit. He's the spirit of truth. He's not going to lead you in error. Amen. God is fully vested in you knowing what choice to make ahead of time. Not just when you get there and you got to hurry up and decide. He wants you to know ahead of time. Amen. The Holy Spirit will show you the things to come, the, the various possibilities of your choices. Amen. God is not playing Russian roulette with your life. Amen. Turn to Jeremiah 29 and 11. Hallelujah, Lord God. And this is a very, you know, familiar scripture, but I just believe even when it's familiar, you need to go back and read it because it does something to me when I actually look at the word. Amen. Regardless of what I know, I need to go back and look at it. Amen. Because this word is alive. Amen. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, for I know this is God. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. He's saying, I know, and I want you to know it too. Amen. I want you to know that I have an expected end for your life and it's good. There's no evil in my thoughts towards you. Amen. I know it. And I want you to know that too. So to be led by him into those good choices, you have to know him. Turn to John 10 and 14. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah. John 10 and 14 says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known by mine. He said, I'm a good shepherd. I know those that belong to me, and they know me as well. 10 and 27 says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So it's not enough to hear God, know God, and then choose to go the opposite direction. You have to hear him, know that it's him, and be willing to obey the instructions that he's giving you. Amen? Amen. You have to follow his leading. Turn to John 10 and 4. Just go back up. 10 and 4 and 5. And when he put it forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. And I shared that when I pray this scripture over myself and over my children and family, I say, Father, I thank you that I am your sheep and I do hear your voice and the voice of a stranger. I will not follow, even if that voice sounds like my own, because sometimes you think it's just you, you know, making a decision or you, you just you have a certain feeling about it. But you have to check to see if what you're thinking and what you're feeling lines up with what the good shepherd has said. Because we're supposed to be following him. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct my path. Not me. He will direct my path. So if I hear a voice that's contrary to the word of God, that's a strange voice that I can't follow. If the thoughts in my mind about an issue are contrary to the word of God, that's a strange voice. Even if it sounds like me thinking it, I can't follow that. I got to make sure that what I'm thinking and what I'm deciding is lining up with the will and the word of God. Amen. Those thoughts that the enemy wants to plant in my mind, I have to do what 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 says. 
It says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of who? God, the shepherd, the one that's leading us and bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Because our choices really start with what's ruling in our thoughts. That's where the decision making takes place. What's ruling in your thoughts that's leading you to those choices? Amen. So once I have that in check, now I can hear what the voice of God is telling me to do. And I know I'm making a good choice. Amen. So you need to know the voice of God. You need to hear the voice of God and obey the voice of God. Something else that you need to do to make sure that the choices that drive your life are led of him. You also need to know yourself and where you are mentally, emotionally. You need to know yourself and it takes the Holy Spirit to reveal that to you. Amen. Not knowing yourself will have you making choices from an unhealed and an unbalanced place from a place where your vision has been altered or obstructed by the experiences that you had in life. Turn to Proverbs 25 and 28. We're talking about a choice-driven life, amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Proverbs 25 and 28 says that he that have no rule over his own spirit. That means his spirit is not doing what 2 Corinthians said. It's not subject to the spirit of God. It's not being brought under subjection to the, to the knowledge of God. He that have no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. That means you're completely without protection. You have nothing to stop you from being pushed this way and that by whatever situation comes up because you're not fortified by the spirit of God. Amen. Turn to Romans 7 and 19. Hallelujah, Lord God. You want to make sure that you're making decisions from a good place. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 7 and 19, and we're going to read down through verse 23. It says, for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity. That ain't what's supposed to be happening. The thoughts are supposed to be in the cap under captivity, not you, but it's something else bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. And a lot of times we always think about that as, as sexual sin or something. But there's anything that's keeping you from choosing to do the will of God. It's something that's not brought under captivity to the knowledge of God. And the Holy Spirit said to me that your life is a car. And it's your choices that drove you to wherever you are right now. If you look at the state of your life. Whatever is good, whatever is bad, whatever it is, there are choices that you have made that drove you to that place. And if you're not allowing the Holy Spirit to deal with the stuff in you that he needs to deal with to explode, expose the lies of the enemy that have been controlling your life, it's like trying to drive. You think you by yourself, but somebody else pulling the wheel. You don't even know. You feel like these are your choices. It's just like when you got in the car and decided to come here. You decided what road you were going to take. You decided, I'm going to turn left here. I'm going to turn right here. I'll get there by such and such time. You made those choices, and those choices are what guided you to this place. But in the spirit and in your soulish man, 
if the Holy Spirit is not allowed to get in there and deal with that stuff that's not of God, it's like you're trying to drive and somebody else keeps pulling the wheel. No, I ain't going that way. We're going this way. You think it's you. No, you know, the spirit, he said, for I delight in the law of God. So he wanted to do what was right. He wanted to serve God with his whole heart, mind, soul, and spirit. I want to do that. That's what's on the inside of me, but it's always something blocking. You know, something comes up that stops you from fully apprehending what God wants you to do at that time. That's those things that you need to allow the Holy Spirit to get in and deal with. But he's so cunning, he makes you think it's you. You know, it's just me. I just can't get it right. You know, I just, I, you know, I keep trying. It's something about me that I just can't get it right. I keep messing up. I keep messing things up. I keep choosing the wrong man. I keep choosing the wrong woman. I keep making bad decisions. He steps all the way out the way and lets you take all the blame on yourself. He sets you up to make the bad choices and then step back and let you assume all the responsibility. That's what the enemy does. So it's imperative that you allow the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher, who is our guide, our leader, the one that comes in and brings conviction and say, that right there ain't right. That's not of me. And if you don't deal with that, that's going to lead you to some choices that you don't need to make. That's what the Holy Spirit is there for. But when you're making those choices, it's because you're doing it from an unhealed and unbalanced and an obstructed place. Amen. And the Holy Spirit said to me in studying this that as an individual, you don't even know yourself until you've been healed. You know, if you have not taken the time to let the Holy Spirit, you know, just walk you through some issues and areas in your life that we need to deal with, who you are, you really think that's you because you've never been anything else. I'm just like this. This is just who I am. And you don't even really know who you are because you've never been completely healed. That's why the enemy starts down here trying to introduce pain into children's lives, trying to introduce abandonment into their lives because he wants to corrupt their vision and have something in place that's controlling their decision making and they don't even know where it's coming from. And some of us adults, if we'll be honest, we can see some areas that's been on autopilot. Like this is like, why do I keep doing that? Why do I keep responding that way? Why does that offend me so much? Because there's a trigger been planted way back when that we haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to go in there and expose it and remove it. So you don't even truly know yourself until you allow God to heal those places that need to be healed. Amen. To expose the lies that have been manipulating your life. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. You don't know you until you've been healed and restored and returned to a former condition, place, or position. Turn it, uh, Jeremiah 1 and 5. You don't have to turn there. It's, uh, but let's go. Go ahead. Turn to Jeremiah 1 and 5. Because there's a you that existed before the you that's present right now. And that's really the real you. The real you is strong. The real you is confident. The real you is healed and whole. The real you is happy. The real you don't have a chip on their shoulder. The real you ain't always ready to, you know, to go there. You know, I got the directions, but I ain't got to be ready to go there every day, all day. Anybody could get it. Anybody, I don't have to be there. That's stressful. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's stressful. Living on ready all the time. That's exhausting. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Till you've been returned to a former condition, a place or position of wholeness. Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, Before I formed thee in the belly, 
I knew thee. So that's before you were even in your mother's womb. There was a you that existed outside of all of the things that have happened in your life. Before all of the things that have happened in your life, there was a you that existed that came straight from the spirit of God. And he's saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of thy, thy mother's womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet to the nations. What he's saying is, before you even got to this place, I set you apart for my purpose. And sometimes we're being controlled by things and being guided by things that had nothing to do with the will of God for our lives. But he still has a purpose. And because it's written, he's letting you know that that purpose is still intact. It's still available. Amen. Yes, Hallelujah, Lord God. And now seeing that the word of God is clear, that God has a purpose, plan, and a destiny for your life. You have to make choices that protect your purpose. Amen. At any age, especially to our young people, you have to make choices that are going to protect the purpose of God on your life. Amen. You cannot run with everybody. I don't care how long you've been knowing them. Length of time don't necessarily mean that it was something established by God to be a part of your life. Because some, you know, those are soul ties. We feel like because we've been knowing each other so long. But is my purpose protected when I'm around you? Or do I have to gird myself up because you are always trying to pull me in a different direction? And I, my instructions to my children is you need to pick friends that you comfortable in your salvation around. You don't need to pick friends that you always got to remind them, you know, I'm saved, so I don't do that. You might need to stay from around them because they clearly, you know, are not vested in you maintaining your salvation. So just because you, it don't mean you don't like them, but you got to make choices that are going to protect the purpose of God that's on your life. Amen. Turn to 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33, unless I wrote fast again. Let me get over there. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33 says, Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. And I think we kind of misunderstand that sometimes. It's not talking about your manners saying yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. That's not what it means when it's saying evil communication corrupts good manners. It's talking about the manner in which you live your life. That's what's getting corrupted. Proverbs 13 and 20 said, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Destroyed ain't no light word. That's serious. Being a companion, making fellowship, joining your life to foolish people can bring destruction in your life. And I shared with them on Tuesday, you can't do life with people that don't value life. When you see people making choices for their own life, that's destructive. They don't care what they put in their body. They don't care where they take their body and then want you to go with them. You can't do life with people that don't value life. Amen. And you can tell whether or not they value life by the decisions that they make. If you married, you can't do marriage with people that don't value marriage. You want other married couples to hang out with and this thing. You better find some people that value marriage. You know, I don't, we might, I might consider you a friend, but if you don't like your husband and you always talking bad about him, we can't, we can't hang out. Because I love my husband. My husband love me. If you a man and you love your wife, you can't be running with people that can't stand who they with and always talking bad about their wife or women in general. Because... Bad communication 
starts to affect the manner in which you live your life. And everybody want to think I'm strong, I'm grown, don't nobody tell me what to do, but the Bible is true. Regardless of how you feel about yourself, if the Bible says that it will corrupt the manner in which you live your life, you need to take note of that and stop thinking you're stronger than what the Word of God says because he knows what he's talking about. The people that you choose to do life with, those are the people that can influence your thoughts and your choices. Somebody influencing somebody. So either you're influencing them to do things God's way, or they sowing seeds of discord in your life, sowing confusion, sowing laziness. Man, I, I don't think I want to go over there. You know, you want to you want to enroll in summer classes because you're trying to get a head start. But all your friends saying, "Well, we're going this place, we're going that place," and instead of telling you if that's what you feel like you need to do, then I encourage you. They try to discourage you. And tell, well, you, you can start in the fall. That's when we starting, but that ain't what the Lord told you to do. Those are people whose manner of living is not in line with your manner of living. And you got to be conscious of that because it's real slick because you feel like they just want to hang out with me. They just, you know, or, or whoever, whatever the situation is, the enemy is not out there vocalizing, this is the devil speaking. Follow me. That's not what he's saying. He's cunning. And you have to know yourself. You have to know your purpose and follow after that. Amen. Proverbs 22 and 24 says, make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man, thou shalt not go. And I brought that up because, especially to the, the young women, it's been seasons and periods of time where it seemed like every other day is some young woman being killed by some crazy man, you know. And vice versa. It's some crazy women out there. Doing, I'm talking about doing some diabolical stuff. Like, you just could not imagine. Like, how did your mind even come up with that? You know, what kind of evil? Cause you to even come up with that. You got to know what people are capable of. And like, and I said, you know, to the, to the guys, you know, if your homeboy a shooter and he make it known he a shooter, you can't run with him because he don't care about his own life. He letting you know. And you can't trust that you're going to be safe because you with them. Because they done made it unsafe to be somewhere with them. Right. So you can't be out here thinking, well, I'm not doing what they doing, so I'm all right. We see that in the news all the time. Guys that didn't have nothing to do with what was going on. But they was around people that did not value life. And the enemy took advantage of the situation. Young women being set up by their so-called friends. That ain't overnight. They ain't just call you today and say, hey, come over here, and then they jumped you. They've been grooming that for months and years, and you don't even have the discernment to see that person is not your friend, that they don't really like me like that. Like every time they make a joke, it's a backhanded insult. That ain't, no. No. And you heard it, the Holy Spirit be saying, hey, you hear that? But you laughing it off with them. You can't, this Holy Spirit is a still, small voice. And when you hear him the first time, something, you know, this ain't, obey the Holy Spirit. So it can be well with you, amen. You know, and if their intentions weren't bad, it's still all right. They'll get over it and you're going to live to see them another day. But when you hear the Holy Spirit saying, this ain't the move today. You know, you need to listen to that. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. And the last thing I want to share today with you all and to encourage you in is if that if it's the fact is that you made some bad choices that have gotten you to a place, you looking at your life and saying, nah, this ain't really, 
you know, what I intended. This ain't where I want to be in life. I don't like how my finances look. I don't like how my family is functioning. I don't like whatever it is that you see in your life and you don't like it and you know you made a choice to get there. What's important for you to know is you still have the power to make another choice. Because that's another deception of the enemy to make you think that because you made this bad choice, now you just stuck. You know, you just got to deal with it. You ain't got no choice now because you you eliminated your options. What whatever it was, God is still God. And if you submit yourself to him, he knows how to put you on the right path. The Bible said that he causes all things to be worked together for the good of them who love him and are called according to his purpose. It doesn't mean it was his intention for you to make that bad choice because that's another foolishness that's in the world. I had to go this way. God had to, I had to go to jail. No, you did not. You didn't have to rob nobody. I had to have, go through that. So I had to have, you don't have to have a bad marriage to appreciate a good marriage. The devil is a lie. You know, all of the stuff that they say to comfort their own bad decisions. Instead of just saying, I messed up. God told me not to do that. I did it anyway. I wasted my time. You know, I didn't go to class. What, whatever it was, own that, repent for it, and trust that God's plan for your life is still good. Amen? So if you made a bad choice, you can still change directions and turn things around. Satan is a liar and the father of lies. You can repent right now and ask God to forgive you and start choosing his will, his way, and he will give you the grace and the wisdom that you need. You are not powerless because of a bad choice. You still have a choice. Amen. The prodigal son made some bad choices, and when he came to himself, and realize I really done messed this all the way up. He didn't just stay there and say, well, I messed it up. I'm just stuck. He said, no, I, I, I need to get up and go back home. I need to go back to my father. You can, I need to go back to God because he's the author and the finisher of my faith. He's the one who gave me life. And if I mess it up, he don't, if anybody can fix it, God can. If anybody can turn it around for your good, God can. Amen. So be encouraged today that your life is choice driven and you always have that choice. Amen. That's all I have today. Let's give God glory. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We give you glory, Lord God. Hallelujah.